Welcome to Kirk's Toolbox webinar series. Today, we're excited to hear about the darn near bulletproof diesel engine, EGR cooler, sorry, by Bulletproof Diesel. We're gonna do an overview of the conventional EGR cooler design, most common cause of failure for EGR coolers and their exciting H-Core technology. It endures where other units fail. So we're gonna slide along here and introduce our panelists. We have uh, Mike Kirkman. He is the co-president of Kirk's in the transit industry for over 25 years. John Risch is our the sales manager with Bulletproof Diesel. He's been there for in 14 years, um, bringing excellent experience for their customers. He's a proven sales professional with a technical background in automobile tech mechanics, and he has a degree from Ohio State, Idaho State University. He connects with customers on a deeper level and delivers right solutions for their needs. So we're thrilled to have you, John. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having I, me. I am Linda Kleiss, your webinar host, and Abby Thompson is on technical. If you have any issues, you can just put it up in the chat. And also to remind you, John want to answer your questions, so you can type them in the Q&A and we will have them answered at the end. So we'll hand it over to you, John. So we're gonna look at starting with the conventional EGR cooler. Before that, we'll take a look at Bulletproof Diesel. Can you tell us a little bit about the company? Yeah, definitely. So I mean, we are a company based out of uh, Mesa, Arizona. Um, uh, we have roughly about 50 employees, roughly. Um, and we basically, our main focus is EGR coolers, so exhaust gas recirculation. We designed and patented a um, internal portion of the EGR cooler that fixes the problem that most of most of these emission devices are having problems with. So, excellent. So, but, Thank you, John. Let's get move over to the conventional. Yeah, so most most EGR coolers, the conventional design on there um, have thin passageways. It's kind of like a fin and tube design that you would see uh, within a radiator, basically. Um, that uh, that design basically has turned out to be a a very a very high faulty part that uh, causes um, coolant to leak down inside the cylinders. Um, you know, I apologize. I'm just kind of getting ahead of myself here. That's all right. So the EGR cooler basically is tasked with you know, one thing, which is lowering exhaust gas temperatures uh, before it reintroduces the gas into the uh, the engine or back into the cylinders. Um, the conventional design of the EGR cooler is actually a very efficient de design with under certain operating conditions, as long as they are in perfect operating conditions, basically. Um, if coolant basically becomes a problem within the EGR cooler, so if it starts to drop down or if it starts to lose coolant within the system, the EGR cooler is affected very in in a way that uh, will cause it to, to rupture. Um, the exhaust gas basically is is um, or the exhaust gas passageways are bathed in coolant, and they start to experience a if if the coolant is lost, it starts to experience a expansion and contraction um, during that, and the thermal event will basically be present. So what is, go ahead, what is, what is that uh, zoom in? What is the, what is that talking about with that failure? So that that's the end of the EGR coolers or the bulkheads. Um, that basically what happens is, is during that thermal event, what the, the tube and fin design will actually push in and out. So it'll expand and contract inside there. Um, eventually the, the system can't take it any longer and it just pushes itself apart and destroys the EGR cooler. What, so when everything's working perfectly, that design, the radiator design, 
fine. What are the kind of conditions that would cause it? What are the what are the not ideal conditions? Well, most of it's going to be like a loss of coolant. Um, a loss of coolant inside the system uh, just creates um, a, a thermal event in, inside the EGR cooler. And that thermal event basically will just tear the EGR cooler apart. Mm -hmm. And what are the symptoms of that when that's happening? So a couple of the symptoms that you typically see, um, one of them is white smoke out of the tailpipe. Um, so you'll see like a white smoke, um, loss of coolant is another one as well. Um, that's a very common one that we typically see is the loss of coolant. Mm -hmm. Once that loss of coolant goes in there, of course, that's where that thermal expansion goes into place. When you're seeing white smoke, is it too late? It, when you're seeing white smoke, yes, it is too late. Um, the the EGR cooler has now started to, um, it, it, it's ruptured and it's now starting to leak coolant down inside the cylinders, which is pushing it out the exhaust at that time. Um, now white smoke is basically just steam. So I'm just curious, most of the uh, listeners probably already know this, but loss of coolant, is that creating ex more damage? Is it? Um, it, it, it can, yes. Um, I mean, overheating of the engine can cause I I issues with the engine itself. Um, the loss of coolant dumping down inside the cylinders can actually cause, you know, problems with it hydrolocking, um, causing an issue with lifting the head off of the, the block, which will cause a blown head gasket. So there are other, other things that can happen with that EGR cooler failure. Wow. So, um, we were talking um, with Mike and Bob Kirkman the other day, and Bob mentioned that often when they when Kirks is visiting the shops, um, they do t training, help troubleshoot with issues, and they'll come in. He said there's often an EGR cooler, or not, yeah, graveyard, like they're just. You said you see them lying around. <laughs> uh, so if if that's happening, that means that. There's a there could be extensive damage just beyond because uh, when he said that I thought oh got to replace the EGR cooler but that could have led to more damage. Oh sure yeah I mean it it, it definitely can lead to more damage it, I mean it can go down to catastrophic engine failure basically. Wow, wow. Okay, so we're excited to hear about how bulletproof diesel has solved this issue. It's very it's very interesting. Go ahead. Yeah, so we've we've actually patented a a uh, a design on the EGR cooler, and what we do is we we take a bundle of three tubes and we twist them together. It's what we call our H core technology. Um, it's stainless steel tubes twisted together, and essentially what it does is it acts like a spring inside the EGR cooler. So it takes all that pressure that you typically see with the the normal EGR cooler, the standard. Uh, radiator style cooling fins where those push in and out the internals of ours act like a spring it takes all that pressure off of the bulkheads that you typically see so it can't tear itself apart any longer that i, I just when i learned about this i was pretty fascinated like who thought of that just the <laughs> that you're going to take these instead of the standard in this linear roll like <laughs> i don't mean to make fun of engineers but they're so the the engineers and <laughs> the engineers in our in our facility are are pretty amazing guys. They're very smart. Um, they've they 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 basically took this design and just ran with it. Um, they it was just something that we gosh I don't know I it's the the way that we originally did it was with straight tubes and the longer the EGR cooler that you get, we had to figure out a way to be able to make that expand and contract in there without putting that pressure on the ends. And that's, this is where this came from. Oh, so the braids actually give you an extended tube. So um, kind of, yeah. Kind of. Is that polite? 
<laughs> well, no, I mean, it's, it's just with the way that it's designed, it, it acts like a spring inside there. So essentially it floats inside the EGR cooler and, and just takes that pressure off of the ends. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got some more diagrams we can take a look at too, but we were uh, at Kirk's and they had just that internal piece mm -hmm. out and it's it's really beautifully done. Okay, so that's, now we're putting the, the jacket on, right? The cover, what do you call it? Yeah, the, that's the housing of the EGR housing. cooler basically, yeah. So the housing of the EGR cooler, um, we reused the the stock factory housing because there's really nothing wrong with the, the factory housing. All of the problems stem from the internals of the EGR cooler, and that's where we really wanted to focus. So drop-in replacement? Correct, pretty much, yeah. So now we're in normal conditions, right? Yep. Yeah. So with our with our EGR cooler, as long as there's no loss of coolant, um, they're they're going to operate just as normal as anything else. Even during those loss of coolant, uh, it, it allows our tubes to flex inside there. So if there is a loss of coolant, then you don't see that catastrophic failure of the EGR cooler with ours. Mm. Okay. So then when conditions change. Yep. So by design, the braided structure allows the expansion and contraction of the tubes. Um, this means that there's less stress at the bulkheads of the EGR cooler um, and causes less failure. So once once that rupture is greatly reduced, you know, the we we don't have to worry about that EGR cooler. They don't have to worry about their EGR cooler failing failing again. Mm -hmm. Our EGR cooler is just a more reliable solution, more robust solution than what the, the stock application would be. When you say new applications are continually being added, so mm -hmm. can you talk about that? Yeah, so uh, as we as we go through, you know, uh, as, day by day, uh, we have customers that call us asking us for other EGR coolers that we don't manufacture. And with our facility, we're able to basically bring on new applications all the time. Um, we try to constantly keep new new coolers coming into the, into the circulation. So. If somebody's never tried, they've never purchased the bulletproof diesel EGR cooler, what mm -hmm. would be a risk for them trying it? Um, there is no risk. Um, there's when it comes down to the EGR cooler, the our EGR cooler, it's something that uh, you know we if if there's a problem or anything, we we take care of it. Um, there so there there is no risk on the on the end user at all well when you said people are calling you asking you for new applications that means they like it and they want it yeah want definitely it. yeah yeah it's it's yeah. the right solution we have multiple companies that come to us and ask for um certain EGR coolers that we don't have on our shelf to to be able to build them and we've been able to uh, go out and build these EGR coolers for them and it just fixes their problem for them. Mm -hmm. That's great. So one, one issue I'm thinking back to Bob Kirkman's comment about the EGR graveyard, cooler mm -hmm. graveyard. Uh, are there issues where people misdiagnose and they think that there's, that's the EGR cooler, but it's not? Definitely. Yeah. So there a lot of times when it comes down to EGR coolers, um, they, they do get misdiagnosed. Um, sometimes they have head gasket issues or um, they may have, uh, you know, just a leak on the system that, that that's causing a loss of coolant and, and they get misdiagnosed. Um, more often than none, though, when it comes to the factory EGR cooler, 
the EGR cooler is typically going to be the starting point for, uh, you know, a lot of the symptoms that come with these EGR coolers or a lot of symptoms that come with the, the misdiagnosis as well. So how would you um, advise somebody so that they don't rip out a perfectly good EGR cooler? Testing. Um, it, testing is a really big big thing when it comes down to making sure the EGR coolers are tested correctly. Um, if they're not tested correctly, it could just be misdiagnosed. Okay. So they're testing it on site and that's pretty standard. It's pretty standard for the most part. Yeah. Uh, speaking of testing, how are your products tested before so we test every EGR cooler either by vacuum or by pressure. Um, so it's either got a vacuum test um, or, or a pressure test. We do inspect every EGR cooler that goes through our facility. Um, so we know that once it leaves our facility, they're getting a quality product. That's excellent. Beautiful. Uh, okay, we just got um, a couple questions we can answer. Um, First of all, just the um, the H core technology on the screen. It says counter helical core. Is that what those the spirals are called? Correct. Yes. Okay. So it's designed to endure where other units failed. Before we go on, do you want? Can you say something about the life expectancy of the of bulletproof diesel? Well, we offer a lifetime parts exchange warranty on our EGR coolers, so. Um, we expect them to last the life of the truck. Wow. Wow. That's pretty impressive. So we have um, time for Q&A. One of the questions I've already asked. Um, were there any other things? Or Mike, did you have any questions that you wanted to, to share? Throw out there? I think the important thing... Um, that I'd just like to stress, uh, as mentioned, is, you know, we're out meeting with our customers on a, on a daily basis. And, you know, a majority of our customers are in the, the public transit industry. Mm -hmm. So I think the message for those customers is that if they're having issues with their EGR coolers, if they're running into um, re reliability problems, um, it's important for them to reach out to us because we can help them identify, uh, one, if we have a solution for them, um, the solutions vary from application to application, but um, we've got a pretty good handle on some of the applications that are probably having more problems than others. So um, if our customers are experiencing these problems, if they reach out to us, we've got a team of specialists here that they can um, talk to about their problems and um, more than likely we'll be able to find an alternative for them. Excellent. Excellent. Before we wrap up, John, was there anything else you wanted to cover? No, I think that's pretty much all I got. You got a good product. Great product. All right. Well, thank you for joining us uh, at Kirk's Toolbox webinar series. We want to thank our guest, John Risch with Bulletproof Diesel. Um, I love the phrase, darn near bulletproof <laughs> EGR coolers. It's great. And we will be uh, posting this recording of this webinar on Kirk's YouTube channel. We also deliver it in Kirk's monthly newsletter. If you are not getting Kirk's monthly news, why not? Uh, you can just scan that QR code or go to the website and sign up. Kirk's does not dump a lot of email in your inbox, just keeps you updated with products and industry news that's important to you. So we want to thank you for joining us and Kirk's who are your partner for parts, helping you escape the parts trap. Thanks a lot and have a great day.